Part 9 of Work of the Sisters During the Epidemic of Influenza, October 1918, by Francis Edward Tursher. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part 9 Sisters of St. Joseph, Work in Private Homes, St. Anne's Eighteen of the sisters from St. Anne's served in emergency hospitals, nine in number one, Holmesburg, October 10th to 25th, and nine in number three, Philopetrian, October 10th to 29th. Besides the work in the hospitals, the sisters were called by the priests of the parish to visit people stricken in their homes. In one home, the sisters found the mother dead and a daughter very ill lying beside her. Downstairs, the son lay on a couch. He too was ill, but had to get out of bed when his mother was taken sick. At another home, the mother of a family was in a serious condition. These poor people had not even a mattress. The father said he could not get one, so the sisters ordered one for him, also a change of linen. The sisters cleaned the house and washed the children and visited them every day, thus allowing the father to go to work. In another home, the sisters cared for two motherless children. The father took care of them at night, but he had to attend to his work during the day. An aunt, who had charge of the home, would not go near the children's room, so fearful was she of the disease. In another home, a mother and two children had been lying fully clothed for four days, with no one to go near them. St. Carthages The calls here came from priests, doctors, and from the afflicted ones themselves. In many cases, whole families were afflicted with the dread disease, and the sisters had to do cleaning, washing, cooking, as well as nursing. In one family, non-Catholics, the husband lay dead in one room, the wife very low in the next. Their relatives were afraid to visit them, and when finally they did come, after the dead body had been removed, they left their outer garments on the porch, so fearful were they of contagion. In another house, the mother was dying. The people were strangers in the city, and the father seemed to be in despair. Two small children had had no attention for a week before the sisters took charge. The mother died, and it was some days before a coffin could be procured for the burial. A kind neighbor took care of the children for the poor afflicted father until they could be put in a Catholic home. One morning a non-Catholic woman came to the convent at 3.30 a.m. in an automobile, hoping thus to secure the sisters before they started on their daily rounds. The same day the sisters were summoned to a Jewish family where the son was very delirious. However, after going there and finding there was abundant help, the sisters went to a house where a young girl had died of pneumonia. On the day of her burial, the father, mother, and three boys were stricken down. In this house were also a small child and a baby fourteen months old. No washing had been done, nothing cleaned after the girl's death. The sisters took charge of the house until the mother was able to get up. Then a girl was hired for the housework and the sisters were relieved. Eight of the sisters of this convent did district nursing from house to house. St. Charles In visiting the homes of this parish, caring for the sick, cleaning, washing, and cooking, the sisters found quite as much of actual need and want among the well-to-do as in the poorest dwellings of the poor. In one sad case, the sisters found a young woman who had strapped her husband to the bed. He was violently delirious. She herself was soon to become a mother. The husband was removed to the hospital, and the sisters found a nurse. The child was born, but the mother did not live to see its face. She begged the sisters to remain with her to the last, saying, I want you, not the nurse. The sisters tell of a strange experience here. They were called to a boarding house where the husband was a Catholic, the wife a non-Catholic, though she had trained their son in our religion. The priest came to prepare the son for death. The mother then asked to be baptized. She died a Catholic. Later on, the sisters of this woman came to get the body for burial. They asked for keys and went through the trunks. A few days later, the sisters returned to see how things were going in the boarding house. They were met by a storm of invectives and charged with robbery. The incident of the sisters of the dead woman, the keys, and the trunk was recalled. This explained the loss. They had figuratively gone through the trunks and literally left nothing of value. The man humbly and sincerely apologized for his misplaced suspicion of the sisters. 
in another place the sisters found a young man a spaniard married to a negress he could not speak a word of english the sisters taught him to make aspirations in latin he asked to have these written down to aid his memory st columbus a case was reported in the parish of our lady of mercy in this home a man and wife had been ill for two weeks depending solely on help from the neighbors they had been left sometimes for entire days with no care or help from without no one to go near them the woman seemed in a dying condition too weak even to bear much bodily attention after three days of the sister's care and nursing she became normal in appearance and finally recovered in another home the mother had died of the disease leaving five small children these all and the father were ill when the sisters went there the sisters took full charge of the house and family until a proper home was secured for the children in another well-to-do family the sisters found five children all lying ill in different parts of the house and the mother in bed absolutely unconscious the sisters remained there all day then they uh, the patients were removed to st columba's emergency where all recovered in another home a father and mother and child had lain ill for three days with no one to attend to their wants the father was lying fully clothed having been too weak to undress the sisters remained here until the patients were able to do for themselves epiphany the sisters were called to attend a sick lady at her home they found that she had two daughters quite able to attend to her but the father had forbidden them to go near their mother fearing contagion the sisters remained here one day then gave their care to a more urgent case a poor widow and her child who had no one to help them this poor mother died the next case was one of direct poverty finding the door open one of the sisters writes we entered on the table was a loaf of bread and a mouse eating it the place seemed to be headquarters for roaches and ants and creeping vermin going to the second floor the sisters found in one room a bed and no other furniture in the bed were two sick boys one six the other ten years old in the next room was the mother another boy and a baby girl all seriously ill the mother said that they had had nothing to eat since she had gone to bed the day before the sisters procured food clean bed linens and all that was needed then they sent for a doctor and a priest this poor house was soon in better order holy angels in the first home visited by the sisters were a mother and five children all very ill the father and an old grandmother almost blind were the only ones to care for the sick and the work of the house at the next house to which the sisters were called by a presbyterian minister was a polish family here were a mother and four children ranging from six to eight years all in bed wearing what clothing they had there was no coal no bed linen and only one bed cover three of the children had never been baptized the father had just been taken to the holmesburg emergency where he died the next day he had had violent hemorrhages and the condition of the house cannot be described the non-catholic neighbors were eager to help the sisters here the sisters cleaned the house washed the clothes and succeeded in making the family comfortable the children were baptized in answer to a call from abington hospital two of the sisters went there the first duty of one of the sisters was to baptize a dying infant one of the nurses present asked a sister to teach her how to baptize as it would come into her work at another time one of the doctors told the sisters that a baby had just been born and asked them to baptize it the sister explained that it should not be done except in danger of death the physician then asked for a fuller explanation and seemed grateful for the information there was a little girl about ten dying the sister asked her do you believe in god she answered no sister spoke to her for some time and finally the child said do you believe that when the sister answered in the affirmative the child replied then i believe it too the sister gave her conditional baptism holy cross mount airy at this convent the sisters prepared meals for sixty seminarians during twenty-four days these students from st charles seminary had volunteered to dig graves for the dead who were lying unburied in holy sepulchre cemetery 
in consequence of this work of providing for the students announcement was made to the people that they should not call upon the sisters to care for the sick in the homes of the parish the sisters did however attend some private cases one case is reported in which a well-known business man requested the sisters care for the family of an employee these people were not catholics when the sisters went to the house a very small boy came to the door and opening it just far enough to make himself heard said warningly all in this house are sick well replied the sisters we've come to take care of them they found the mother and four small boys very ill and the house in disorder the sisters arranged the room and cleaned the house and cared for the patients one of the little boys asked why the sisters wore that style of dress the reason of the uniform was explained to him then he said you're catholics aren't you catholics are best anyhow all in this home recovered in another home a jewish family the mother of two small children was very ill she recognized the sisters and told them that she wanted their prayers later the husband succeeded in getting a professional nurse but the lady begged the sisters not to leave her she died the next day another case was one of extreme poverty the sisters found a sick mother seated by the stove holding a boy of thirteen in her arms in the same room were two other sick children there was no food in the house to prepare and no way to prepare it the sisters went back to the convent and got all that was needed the sisters went to this house every day until all were well later a letter came from this gentle poor family expressing sincere gratitude for the labor and tender care of the sisters immaculate conception many cases and most pathetic are reported from this parish one in which the whole family was ill mother father and children one child in bed with its father died and there was no place to put the body which had to be kept a week to await burial october twelve two sisters went with the priest to a family all ill these people were well-to-do but now no better off than the most abject poor they could get no nurse the sisters remained with them until nine p m when a woman was found to care for them all here recovered in the next home the sisters found a father and three little girls ranging in age from nine to thirteen all ill they had been deserted by the mother the father a russian could understand no english two of the children had attended the sister's school since september one of them died making her first holy communion on her deathbed the sisters now recall the devout interest of this little girl in all that was taught her as the sincere piety and innocence of a little saint the sisters with the priest took the child's body to the undertakers for burial in another home the mother was dangerously ill and the father seemed dazed with three little children in the kitchen there was not even a basin in the house the father went out and borrowed one the sisters then washed the mother and cared for the children one of them a baby next door they found conditions even worse the mother and a boy had been ill for some days with absolutely no attendance the sisters made these patients comfortable and cleaned the place then going downstairs they found three more children shivering with cold and literally clothed only in a few rags the mother here was soon to become a mother again the sisters phoned for an ambulance the policeman came and removed the mother to a hospital the sisters then washed and dressed the children and after great difficulties they got the father's consent to have them sent to the children's home bureau in one family a father mother and seven children six of the children were sick the youngest an infant only a few days old the mother a non-catholic had had no care since the birth of the child the infant seemed to be hardly human its arms and legs a mass of raw flesh one sister took charge of the kitchen the other of the bedroom there were no clean linens for the beds the supply at the convent was exhausted by previous demands but the mother of one of the sisters came to the rescue and furnished everything necessary to make the place fit for human habitation all in this home recovered except one child eighteen months old the mother is now being instructed and will be received into the church a non-catholic family living very near the sisters school had been ill for a week without attendance the sisters heard of this and went to the house 
they found a young man and his wife and a child nine months old the woman was huddled up in a chair the man lying on a couch he had been vomiting blood there was no heat and no food in the house the husband was later removed to the holmesburg emergency where he died after a few days under the care of the sisters there the wife was taken to the howard hospital the sisters were taking care of the child and wondering what to do with it when a man entered and said gruffly that's my son-in-law's baby i'll take it that ended the case a limit to human gratefulness st joseph's from old st joseph's comes a touching description of a division of the community into the contemplatives sister in charge of the house and those too old to go out who adore before the blessed sacrament and active members who went to seek our lord in the alleyways on one occasion the sister cook left alone at home went into the street and got some children to come to the chapel and kneel before the blessed sacrament while she prepared food for her associates of the active life st leo's tacony the first case was in a family where the father and four children were sick with influenza the poor mother had them all in one room so as to be able better to attend to them she had not lain down from friday of one week until tuesday of the following week the neighbors even the woman's own sister refused to assist her in nursing they would leave on the doorstep anything she called for out of the window the sisters took charge of the patients while the mother retired for necessary rest they cleaned the house washed the soiled clothes and left the bed linen in a disinfectant for two days in the next home father mother and sick children were sick attended only by the old grandmother who was so lame that she had to put her crutch aside and crawl upstairs on her hands and knees the sisters spent three days there the mother was taken to the emergency hospital she had been violently delirious but became quite calm after the sisters took charge one of the sisters contracted the disease in this home and was very ill for two weeks in one family both parents and two children were very sick it was nearly a day before their sad plight was known then a neighbor phoned to the archbishop to ask that someone be sent there when the sisters entered they found a baby boy three and a half years old trying to give a drink to the sick the sisters remained with this family day and night for a week another case was that of a protestant young woman who had lain unattended from sunday to saturday the conditions existing can hardly be described there was no other woman in the house the father was a cripple who could not climb the stairs and appeared to be under the influence of drugs the neighbors called for assistance two sisters were sent they washed the patient and put the bed into a more airy room as the family could afford to pay for a nurse the sisters urged the father to get one they remained however after the nurse's arrival in order to see that the girl was made comfortable nearly all the sisters who attended this case contracted the disease or became prostrate from exhaustion End of part nine.